We often hear it said that good things take time, that something cannot be rushed if you want it to be perfect. I feel this applies quite nicely to the topic this set of videos will cover, the long-awaited third instalment to the Walsham Files, Bunny Farm. Of course, Bunny Farm has been long-awaited for a number of very good reasons. Relocate Project, the second Walton Files video, came out nine months ago as of writing this script. A major element of the visuals required some different methods to be used to get them, and by that I mean the game parts. The fact that the video is nearly an hour long, and the great tragic loss of Christmas Eve 2020, in which Martin's computer encountered some issues and a section of the video's assets were lost as a result. But it was not rushed, and the result was another great instalment that filled in a great many pieces of the puzzle mostly around one particular character who we'd so far learned very little about. So, let us finally talk about this video. As always, I ask you to watch the video and the hidden one that goes with it first. I'll be talking about both, and that means spoilers. If you've not seen it, please go do so now. I also ask that you maybe take a look at my previous talking about videos on the Walton Files to understand where I am with my own theories on it. Also, Bunny Farm is a VHS horror video, and this one in particular involves some very hard-hitting subjects. Be warned that it might be upsetting, and I'd always advise you to avoid such videos if you feel they will negatively affect you. I'm really not messing around this time. This one ends with a horrific story that could easily hit home for some. If child death and drunk driving are not things you're comfortable with, please don't go any further. This is also going to be another multiple-part video. So once again, if you do not see something mentioned here, it might just be in another part. And, because I know someone will say it, I know the Grey Rabbit gets their name revealed in this video, but until we reach the part where they do, I will still be calling them a buddy at times, so the script sounds less weird. I'll mostly refer to them as the Grey Rabbit, though. And so, here we go at last, Bunny Farm. The video opens up on a series of clips from the past two main videos. It starts with the introduction to the first video's very first clip, which then skips forward a bit to show the technical support text from that same clip, and then jumps to the introduction for the second video's first clip, which again jumps forward a few times, showing more pieces of that same clip. The Bunny Smiles Inc. logo, Little Bond signing the Relocate Project document, and the cropped founders image. For a second or two of the second clip of that video, Vanny's facial recognition tape. We then see a few seconds of the television advert that was teased at the start of commercial, and a little of the local 57 news report from the St. Juana's forest with the words, activity in a local forest heard. We then see a few seconds of Bond's pristine 1974 form on a stage moving, as Sophie's image begins to fade in on the centre of the picture. As she fades in, a series of more images and clips flash by. Some of it we've seen in the past videos, but some of it is new. In order of first appearance we see from the previous videos, the white and red Bond's Burgers logo, the shot of Bond's Burgers that showed it was condemned after closing with a close-up of Boozoo over it from the performance shown in the very first clip, the photo of the two founders of Bunny Smiles Inc., the characters of Little Bond sat on a sofa and the television screen they are watching, Little Bond checking for the noise in the dark as the glitchy noise from Jack's missing poster is heard, the robotic Bond as he was when Brian was trying to test his functions out, the green screen with the information about the K9 bunker, Brian travelling down the road towards K9, Sophie's pill bottle, the home video, Jack's missing poster on the television screen, the lighter on the floor, the K9 bunker door as it was shot by Kevin, Hillary and Ashley, Brian's ID card, Kevin, Hillary and Ashley's shot footage of the broken animatronics of Bon, then Shah, their sleeping bags, the back door's door, a shot of the Billy animatronic, one of the local 57 St. Juana shots we saw in this video earlier. However, in the midst of all the familiar are a few new things, which get added into the rotation always in the same order. A shot of Boozoo with a stage background, which makes me think this is pristine 1974 Boozoo, although Sophie's photo hides his face. A second or two of a video shot at a bar, which looks like it's in a high school or college party. A few seconds of pristine 1974 Shah moving as the camera moves towards her. Towards the end of this sequence, we also get the same clips in the same audio repeated a few times at speed. Little Bon in the darkness, robotic bomb being checked by Brian, the back door's door, more of robotic bomb being tested, the robotic Billy, Brian's ID card, the lighter, the pill bottle, broken Bon and broken Shah being worked on for the relocate project, the three sleeping bags, and then the new clips. 
Eventually it stops and the first half of a YouTube link flashes up at the bottom left of the screen. We'll need this later to find Bunny Farm's hidden video, which we'll discuss properly later. Then under her photo fades in Sophie Walton and then 22 years old, born 1960. Then another photo of another girl fades in and we too get her name and age, Jenny Letterson, 26 years old, born 1956. Then we get the words, footage from October 15th, 1982. This immediately sets us into the year of 1982 and five days after Brian Stells went to K9 for his work shift and ended up being killed by Bon. We then get to hear a bit of music being played through some older speakers as the words of Bunny Smiles Games drop slowly onto the screen, landing and brightening up. The words Cyber Fun Tech 1982 appear under it and Billy to the right. This is one of the teased images we first saw in commercial. We then get to see an image of a yellow box that bears the cartoon faces of Bon, Shar and Buzu and bears the words Bunny Smiles Inc. Beta Tester Golden Ticket. The title screen for the game then appears a Bon head on a black background and the words Bunny Farm in a big red title. Underneath is Insert Coin and Bunny Smiles Games 1975 to 1982. The music is 8 bit and starts with a pattern that is the Morse code for SOS. We then hear a conversation between the two girls we were just introduced to. Jenny tells Sophie that this is the game she wanted Sophie to try and that she's been playing it for a while now and thought Sophie might like it. We hear that the cabinet has been installed in the basement of the building and Sophie is asked to be careful with it as it is apparently quite expensive and delicate too. They start up the game and Sophie creates a save file accidentally typoing her name in the process and discovering there's no option to delete or go back. So she ends up naming the save file Soapy as Jenny laughs at her teasingly calling her a dumbass. The list of save file names we can see includes a few that we'd seen before in commercial. Jenny, Janitor, BSI Tester. We can now see that the ST-A one that I'd had trouble with before was indeed Starla as quite a few commenters had suggested. There's also a file with a few numbers and what looks to be the name Chris. We see a black screen with the word recording in the top corner. Then the game starts up with a cartoon cutscene inside of the Bonds Burgers restaurant and we can already see Jack's photo on the wall but it appears to be a normal photo, not distorted or creepy as we've seen him appear mostly in the past. Some vague white humanoid figures fade in before Bon wearing a straw hat appears in the foreground to call around the other members of the showstoppers. As the white humanoids walk around behind him, he asks if the others remember what today is and the footage briefly dips in and out before Banny responds that she knows. Bon asks if anyone else remembers before allowing Banny to remind the others that today is the fruit festival and they always have a huge party. Boozle and Shah say that they forgot about it, but Shah remarks that she hopes that this year's party will be better than the one last year. The cutscene cuts in and out again and we see the line, I'm sure it will, but don't hear any voice lines to go with it. Bon then asks the others to put their fruit into the basket, but the others reveal that they haven't brought any fruit for the party basket. Bon calls the others dumb salamanders for forgetting the important stuff and the cutscene during this cuts in and out again. We then see a hippo character who overheard the conversation and informs the gang that he has a barn full of fruit. He offers to give them fruit if they come help him out with some small favours and Banny immediately gets excited about the possibility of seeing all the animals. Bon tells the hippo, Pete, that they'll do it, but his scene and voice get cut away from prematurely and go straight to the next part with Shaw, who comments that it will be fun to work together to save the festival, in between more cutting in and out. Then Billy suddenly appears and declares Billy, to which Banny responds, what? Pete then asks the cast to follow him and the scene ends. But before we leave the restaurant, we see a black figure fading in from the staff door at the back, maybe the Shadow Man. The black screen with recording returns and then there is a chime as we see a very fuzzy photo in the centre of screen with Pete and another horse character standing within the scene. Over the top are the words Pete the Hippo's Farm. We get a fun fact screen with Banny on it that tells us that she likes birds. Sophie comments to Jenny that she likes the artwork of the game but that it seems familiar to her somehow. The game then loads in on the farm, Bon is the controllable character standing in front of a barn with Billy to his right and Pete to his left. Jenny then demonstrates the controls, moving around and interacting with Pete to make him say apples. Jenny tells Sophie that she was playing this game for a while some time back and has noticed a lot of stuff and clarifies by saying that she feels the game is very unfinished. During this part, the Bon avatar is moved down low enough that we can see a long-eared grey character. 
Possibly the grey rabbit who for now I'm still going to be calling Buddy in the script. The girls move Bon around the farm to explore and find other characters, while Sophie notes that the machine did say that the game was only a beta test, and Jenny continues to talk about how the errors, glitches and crashes she experienced while playing didn't seem normal and were freaky. She says that those glitches were why she wanted to show Sophie the game in the first place, as Sophie is apparently into weird, mysterious things like that. During this time, they read the plaque under the statue of the founder of the farm. Bobby the Hippo was the original owner of the town. He had two sons, Pete the Hippo and Johnny the Hippo. Bobby made the promise of creating the best quality barn in the world. R.I.P. Bobby. Older year, other year. Sophie feels another twinge of remembrance upon hearing the name of Bunny Smiles Inc. Jenny says that the company had been pretty newsworthy recently, then goes on to talk about how recently an employee of BSI, Brian, had gone missing on what was rumoured to be his first day. Sophie finds it strange that he could just vanish, as Brighton isn't a very big town. Jenny then repeats what she calls an urban legend regarding another BSI employee, Ashley, who had gone missing a few years back, and how it's rumoured that she's still down in the company's bunker. Again, during this part while wandering around, it's possible to catch sight of another one of the mysterious characters from the series lore, lurking just out of sight, the White Bear. Sophie decides that it just sounds like stories designed to keep kids out of the forest and suggests that they just continue to play the game. Jenny agrees, laughing that this isn't the sort of stuff to talk about while playing a child's game, but Sophie is quiet and obviously deep in thought about what she's just heard. Jenny asks her if she's okay, and Sophie quickly changes the topic to ask if she needs to go to a certain person. Jenny just tells her to approach each character for their minigame, and Sophie looks at Shah before deciding to choose someone else as Shah's game looks boring to her. She eventually chooses Billy's game, and the image of the outside of Bond's burgers pops up with Billy on top and the chime sounding again. We see another fun fact screen, but Shah's cartoon self is squashed and the girls laugh a little at this sign of the game being broken. Sophie again voices that she feels like BSI and other things she's seeing here are things that she remembers, but she just doesn't quite remember from where or how. Jenny then tells Sophie that she unfortunately has to go as she has an essay to finish and leaves Sophie alone with the Bunny Farm game cabinet. We return to the inside of Bond's burgers, and Billy appears on screen, curiously asking Bond why he's there if he's supposed to be at the barn with the others. He then starts to tell the screen that he's trying to get preparations for the party completed with a slight hiccup in the voice audio, but that the things he needs are hidden behind puzzles. There are gaps in the dialogue where Billy vanishes off screen, almost as if these are the spots that Bond's own cartoon avatar should be appearing and replying but instead we get no Bond and silent white noise in the gaps. Billy asks Bond if he could help him solve them, but partway through saying they need to get the party hats in the basement, Billy's dialogue is cut off and his avatar vanishes off screen. It returns but starts blinking off and on screen with small sound bites playing that sound like parts of its previous dialogue, before all of Billy's different avatar poses appear on screen at once, overlapping with each other with only white noise. Another small second of sound plays as all the Billys vanish off the screen, the background darkens and on the left of the screen appears a Billy that looks a lot like the animatronic version inside of the canine back doors, only with a face that looks almost pained. Some more dialogue plays which sounds a little bit like Ashley, peaky and distorted as the mess of avatar poses returns to the screen, but pixelated and with a black space where Billy's face should be, as the scene and the animatronic Billy disappear a second before the avatar mess Billy does. The game then resumes with Bon inside a representation of the restaurant, Billy stood on stage and Sophie still controlling Bon. She moves Bon around, collecting presents that when collected give her vague images of the characters inside of the restaurant. First Shaw, then Bon, then finally the white bear, which stutters on and off screen. She also tries the ways out of the room, finding the south door not to work, but going right sends Billy following her off screen, after which the game or recording skips ahead to picking up the second present instead in the room. At one point she also tries the staff door and Billy follows, only to get stuck within the doorframe for a while before managing to clip beyond it into the dark space to the left and somehow pull the game and player into the next room with him. This seems to be an arcade slash party room and Billy says that the party hats are in the basement again. Sophie moves Bond around the room, glitching slightly and walking under objects in the level which causes her to remark that the game is very broken. She eventually tries the double doors at the top and the scene slowly fades out except for a coin-operated ride shaped like a rocket ship which stays on screen, then blinks out. We then find ourselves in a room with a pink and black background of an image, a door in the top left corner, and a machine fitting in the centre. Billy stands next to it. 
Sophie wonders what to do, but quickly locates a yellow battery, which she then places inside of the machine, waking it up. The conveyor starts and dispenses a pen as the recording or game starts skipping forward and cutting chunks out, leaving black gaps. Sophie makes Bond pick up the pen and proceeds to play a game of noughts and crosses on a grid on the front of the machine. She easily wins and Billy walks off screen, returning with another present. Upon picking it up, Sophie receives another picture, this time of the distorted, grinning face of Ashley. Sophie seems a little freaked, then something that sounds like a music box starts playing as the game vanishes, leaving only the picture on screen. A sound like someone trying to talk over a badly tuned radio with poor signal plays, and Sophie calls out for Jenny. We then return to the cutscene of Bond's Burgers as a slightly distorted version of Billy's Happy Birthday song tape plays out, and the Avatar mess Billy appears on screen with a pixelated version of Ashley's bloody face from the end of Relocate Project's fourth clip, where Billy's face should be and where that black gap was the last time. The game returns outside to the farm, and we can see that Billy is gone from the farm, but the edges of the messed up Billy remain imposed over the screen as Sophie can be heard trying to calm herself down and walks around eventually running into the Grey Rabbit, which makes the game hard crash with a worrying noise. Sophie can be heard still panicking a little before her own speech glitches at the end and falls silent. We then briefly see the words, footage from October 16th, 1982 appear on screen, but looming behind it seems to be two eyes and a muzzle with buck's teeth, two long ears on top. It seems to be the Grey Rabbit. However, this quickly vanishes and we go back to the Bunny Farm title screen as Jenny asks Sophie what happened yesterday. Sophie explains that the game crashed but was showing her weird visuals like it was trying to tell her something. Jenny jokingly asks if Sophie thinks the game is haunted and Sophie responds, I don't know, maybe? But the footage cuts in and out as she says this. Jenny tells Sophie that she's gotten weird glitchy visuals too if she did certain things, but then asks Sophie if she really wants to play the game as it's very late. Sophie simply tells her that Jenny is free to go to bed if she wants to, and Jenny decides to do just that. The footage then skips ahead to Sophie choosing her save file, and after a slight pause and what sounds like a few clicks, the machine flashes slightly and pulls up an image of a 3D frowning bomb face with serious sounding 8-bit music behind it. But briefly before this, we see the faded buddy face we saw behind the date earlier, which becomes a much clearer image of the same face. The frowning bomb face has text placed over it that reads, Oh no! There is a high chance bunnyfarm.ppx file data has been corrupted or its information has been altered slash replaced by a third party. We recommend you unplug the machine immediately. Opening the file may lead to unknown glitches and errors in the levels. If you do want to continue, however, we warn you that the machine can suffer major changes and as its worst case a complete shutdown, deleting all valuable information in it. Do you still wish to continue? Sophie asks herself if this means all her save data from yesterday is gone, as unknown error code 0722 appears at the top of the screen. Sophie swears that she's not going to enter the clown level again, and the footage once again cuts out, but before it does, the no option at the bottom of the screen changes into a pair of eyes, but reverts back to no after the footage returns. Sophie decides to re-enter the file because she wants to look deeper into the glitches. Immediately upon entering, she mutters that she expects to see glitches now because the file is corrupted, but so far things look pretty normal. Billy is even returned, standing where his game starts again, although originally upon loading his colours seemed to be inverted, but that could just be the discoloration over that part of the screen. Reading the board next to him, Sophie finds what seems to be instructions or hints for the game, though there only seem to be three pages. The background behind the manual though is a forest coloured in red with what seems to be a figure standing there and the game sprite of Bon in the bottom right corner. The footage cuts again, and Sophie is back in the game, wandering over to the statue again and reading the plaque which flashes on screen for merely a second. Only, this time, it reads much differently. He promised to take care of the two kids during the day. He told the parents everything was okay. It's sad that we can't really remember you, Sophie, but soon we'll be together, forever and ever. R.I.P. The two lovely red children. May 11th, 1962. May 2nd, 1974. August 22nd, 1965. May 2nd, 1974. Immediately, the mention of two lovely red children brings to mind these two red figures we saw teased at the end of footage. Now we know that these two are children, and they both died on the same day and likely together, maybe by the hand of someone who had promised their parents that they would take care of them. We also now know that they seem to know Sophie. Sophie wanders away from the statue, seemingly not having read it as it blinked past. She wanders until the footage cuts again and skips forward to her approaching Banny's sprite. 
but just before it cuts away, we see a blue character lurking in the tree line. A character that is the same blue as the Bon avatar Sophie is controlling, but this Bon has no hat and much larger eyes. Sophie approaches Banny and selects her game, and we see a cartoon Banny placed on top of a photo of a pigsty with the word Hippo House over it. Sophie dryly comments that those are pigs, seemingly reading the level title. A new cutscene begins with the barn background, Banny appearing still enthusiastic about the farm. Then, the second character we saw on the screen for Pete's farm appears, a horse girl named Holly. Banny thinks she's pretty, and her face turns red. She asks if the two of them are there to help her feed the pigs, and Bond's character flickers on screen briefly to say yes, but only gets the first letter out before he vanishes off screen and the audio stops. Banny appears on screen as she enthusiastically tells Holly how much she wants to take care of the pigs, and Holly asks that they follow her instructions. She tells them not to open the cages, but Banny decides she's going to do just that after a few seconds pause. We then get a short scene of static pig models wandering inside of a house. We return to the barn and Holly says that all the pigs have now escaped into the hippo house and Bon calls Banny a dumb bunny. However, behind them in the background we can now see a character there who isn't supposed to be, the broken animatronic Bon. Banny sadly says that she was trying to help and Holly says that each pig is in a different room and they need to find the key to each door to open them. We then see a white figure in a farm hat wandering towards the barn, but as they appear something else appears next to them, a missing poster for Jack Walton. When this scene happens, Bon hiding in the trees disappears. We then get a game level inside the living room of the hippo house as Sophie comments that she just has to catch the pigs. In the room are two hippo children standing around a table and another hippo asleep on a couch, while Holly and Banny stand to the right of the room. There are also two pictures of hippos, one who appears to be Pete and the other who could be any of the hippos. On the table behind the couch, we can see a pill bottle standing next to a lamp this could be a nod to Sophie's own pill bottle we've seen before. Sophie explores the room for the keys, managing to clip slightly through the edges of the wall as she comments more on how the game is broken. She eventually sees the blue key under the couch, and picks up and places down a bucket of chicken in front of the couch, which gets the sleeping hippo to move to it. She pushes away the seat and picks up the first key, headed to door 1 to unlock it. Inside she finds a dark room much wider than any house room and looking like a corridor in some sort of commercial or retail facility. She moves upwards and passes through a doorway into another door, but her avatar hits a black shadow in the shape of Banny and she returns back to the living room area, which she is confused about. However, there are now subtle differences in the room. As expected, door 1 is now open and the couch is back where it originally was. However, both the hippo children have lost their eyes. The third hippo is nowhere to be seen, the red key is now blatantly sat out in the open, the pill bottle is gone, Holly and Banny have moved, and the photo of Pete on the back wall has instead been replaced with Felix's half of the founder's photo. Also, while previously every other character on the screen had been moving in their idle animation before, only Holly is still moving, the other three completely still. Sophie moves to collect the red key, but shortly before she picks it up, Banny's face changes from her happy, almost dreamy expression to one with half-lidded eyes and what looks to be an open mouth. Sophie moves to and unlocks door 3 and enters. Inside she finds the picture puzzle we'd seen in the teaser trailers for Bunny Farm, but the pig also in the room on the other side of the conveyor belt. Sophie tries to cross it, but is swept off to the side, so she goes to the puzzle to make the picture and solve it. As she does the puzzle, Sophie reflects that the unknown error from earlier seemed to be either trying to talk to her, or get her to do something and since it happened when she interacted with a character, she wonders if they've got something to do with it. She also reflects that she talks to herself a lot. When she matches the last piece of the puzzle, the room puzzle and characters vanish off screen and instead the screen shows Sophie a picture of Banny's face staring eerily at her. There is a flash of the employee door at Bond's Burgers which then goes off screen and we see the name Susan Woodings appear on screen instead. An audio log then begins as we see the photo of a woman on screen. The voice identifies themselves as Susan and says that the audio log is the third, recorded on the day of June 30th, 1974. We discover that Susan worked in technical support at BSI, and that she practically built all the animatronics. However, she noticed that today something was off with Bond's movements being stiff, especially in his right arm. Today was the day of Jeremy's birthday party, the first birthday party that we saw a photo of in Lucky You. She notes that this week has been weird especially the opening of the place when one of the founders, Jack, had been missing now for a few weeks. At this time we see a photo of Jack, and Susan talks about how Rosemary had come in to ask people if they'd seen him. 
Susan notes that Felix also seems worried and concerned. Susan then goes on to talk about how she felt that the first birthday party they'd held had gone pretty well, but that she needed to take Bond backstage just to check if everything was okay with the robot. During this part, we see the shot of the employee's door again, and around the door on the wall are three images. At least one was a teaser image that Martin showed while Bunny Farm was being worked on, and another is the whole founder's photo with both Jack and Felix in frame. She comments that she's currently the last person in the building, as Felix never showed up today and Chris has already gone home. She finishes by saying that she'll lock up when done, that it's not going to take long, but the picture goes darker and green and her last word stutters before the scene cuts. We then get what appears to be a gameplay-like level or scene of a character with Susan's face in the dark back room with the robots, an eerie silence ambient noise is the only music. The colour of the character that wears her face is the same darkish purple we've seen on the facility caretaker's uniform before. She wanders over to a desk at the top of the room. On it appears to be a naked endoskeleton from the waist up and Shah's head. On the back wall is a photo of Felix's half of the founder's photo, and to Susan's right, just visible at the edge of the light surrounding her, is the hatless bomb we saw lurking in the farm before Sophie approached Banny for her level. We also see Boozy's head on a shelf above the desk, and when she moves further right, we just about see the robotic Banny standing against the far right wall. Susan moves into the room and picks up a wrench from the floor, then approaches the hatless Bond. As she touches him, the background switches to an image of the animatronic Bond stood in what appears to be the back room of Bond's burgers, judging by the cartoonish visuals of the characters on the wall. And while both Susan and the hatless Bond avatars remain on screen, Bond's face vanishes. There is a noise, the scene goes black, and then we get a still of Bond reaching towards the camera in black and white that flashes and flickers side to side as another discordant noise plays over it. We see Susan's photo, and then the eyes and mouth drop off the screen, leaving behind a trail of images. Things go black and quiet again, then with disturbing music fades on screen one of the faces we've seen before, overlaid with Vanny's own in her facial recognition clip. The music continues, a song stuttering and jumping as first the face is darkened, then the eyeballs made bloodshot, then Vanny's head fades in over this new face with the bloodshot eyes filling in her own eye sockets. We get a few seconds of white noise silence and darkness, then the scene fades in on another gameplay style section in the same room in which the player is now controlling the hatless Bond standing to the left. He moves to the centre and picks up another present, revealing on screen what seems to be a photo of Susan slumped over in a corner, with some text in the lower left corner. I'm still alive, but I can't move, and I'm having trouble breathing, and my stomach feels weird. The image goes, leaving Bond with a present above him, standing there in the room. He moves over to the right and gives the box to Banny. It sinks in as she goes from standing still to moving as if breathing heavily, and her expression goes once again from her happy, almost dreamy expression to the one with the half-lidded eyes and what we can see now is probably a straight-line frown. Distorted victory music plays and an image stretches across the screen from the top left corner, attending an image of Little Bon. Level completed! Great job, Soapy! You just made Susan beautiful! This stays on screen for a few seconds. Then suddenly it cuts to a very close-up shot of Banny's face with distorted music playing in the background. She has wide, staring eyes, and slowly the mask dissolves out and leaves only a humanoid face with the same staring eyes that was underneath. Sophie is then put back into the farm to move around, but more things have changed. Pete and Billy have both vanished from around the starting area, as has the notice board that he had been standing next to, and the mailbox that said Pete on it seems to have lost the name and changed positions. There seem to be fewer animals in the pen between the starting area and where Holly is standing too, and the big, dozing yellow creature that was underneath Holly has also vanished. The loose pigs that were wandering around have also vanished, and the game's music is noticeably lower than before. A bucket of water that stood next to the statue is gone, and where Benny's character once stood, there is a missing poster on the building for Susan. As she passes the picnic table area, we can again see the grey rabbit wandering up behind a fence. During this time, Sophie's talking about how what she saw was confusing and scary, but knows that it seemed to have been telling her about an event. She then reflects on how the pills she's taking have made her forget parts of her childhood and teenage years, but says that she doesn't want to remember why she began taking them, because it was for a reason. The recording skips a few seconds forward without a black part in between, then cuts out. Rejoin the recording, the game's background music completely gone now, as Sophie accesses the tips and instructions again. She flips through the three pages again, until suddenly she is able to access another fourth page, something that seems to be handwritten on BSI-branded paper. 
When this happens, the music stops, the red forest background turns to a black screen, and the Bon avatar walks off screen to the right, the sound of his walking the only thing that is now heard. This first page says, Linda Crankin, do not touch, but Crankin has been scribbled out in red, and Thompson has been written instead in the same red ink. Sophie turns and finds more pages, also on the same BSI branded paper, and also written by hand. The first six pages are completely blanked out with large, dark bars over the words, but the seventh has most of the page uncovered and the subtitles have turned on fill in the rest. October 30th, 1964. Bilks has been acting weird lately. He's been drinking more than usual. I am very worried about him. I don't know what to do. He came home at 4am. He was crying. He seemed unstable and stressed. I don't know what to do. Then there are four more blanked out pages, then one that is fully clear. August 23rd, 1965. I know I haven't talked to her as much as I used to. This month has been so, 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 so crazy. I moved in with Felix last week. He was very happy about it. Yesterday, Jack and Rose had the third child. A little girl. Her name is Molly. Molly Walton. Jack and Felix have been pitching up the restaurant idea with a company that's interested in the project. The name's Cyberfuntech. Two more blank pages. Then, December 26th, 1970. Christmas was nice. They built a doll, a grey rabbit for Ed and Molly. Molly named it Rocket. Felix drank a lot yesterday. This has been a problem for a while. He's a good person, but he doesn't want to address this. It's getting worse and worse, but he doesn't notice. He feels bad about it, but doesn't try to change. January 3rd, 1973. It's getting worse. He's so submerged with their project, he doesn't realise how much damage he's doing to himself. How much damage he's doing to me. He keeps going places only to drink. Sometimes he even stays at the warehouse for the sole purpose of drinking. He doesn't listen. He never listens. I don't know what to do. Then, 12 more blanked out pages are turned past in rapid succession until we reach a page which has the text a little blurry and this one isn't subtitled. But screenshotting the image and shrinking it down to make the text not so stretched and blurred gave me. I don't know what to do. I'm so worried. I blank. Make it. I just cannot. Unfortunately, I can't make out the final word of the bottom. If you've any guesses, let me know. We then get seven more rapidly passed blanked out pages and finally... May 2nd, 1974. Dear Felix, by the time you're reading this, I shouldn't be home. I know you're confused. I'm confused too. What you said to me last week hurt a lot, but it opened my eyes. Hopefully, this opens your eyes too. Our relationship isn't healthy. It never was. I'm leaving Brighton this morning. You're in the warehouse with Jack and the others as I'm writing this. By the time you're reading this, I'll already be in Hurricane. I know you were busy today doing Jack a favour. Something related to a school party, I can't remember. Please go there when you have the time. As for me, I'll try to build my own life while I still can. You should do that too. I love you. Goodbye, Linda. On the last page, written in red, are the words, I'm sorry, Linda. I'm so sorry. Sophie mutters that she probably shouldn't be reading this, and flips further, but there is only one more page of the BSI brand paper written on, the one after the last part of the letter in the same red ink. I am sorry. Eventually, it circles back around to the start of the tip slash instructions, and the background, music, and Bon Avatar all return. Interestingly, the empty pages after the final written on page has the background of the paper get a little darker, though I'm not sure if that actually means anything.